talk about the uh, Vedic perspective on the theory of evolution, which actually is quite a fanciful theory, really, when you think about it, that, um, again, it's kind of like the Big Bang Theory, which is the Big Bang Theory is nothing more than a creation mythology, because the basic principle of the Big Bang is that something came from nothing, that I think the tendency is, unless you really delve into what the Big Bang Theory is, they tell you that there was some kind of chunk, and then that chunk exploded, and then from that came that chunk of infinite mass and infinite density came all the universes, all the living entities. But if you really look into the theory, actually, there's no chunk. There's a point of nothingness, and from that point of nothingness, infinite nothingness, uh, everything comes from nothing. So that is kind of a, if you really delve into what the theory of the Big Bang is, it's not that there was a chunk and the chunk exploded on its own somehow or other, and then everything came from, to, into creation from the exploding of that chunk, which goes against the laws of physics, actually, because there is a law in physics that says all systems tend to go to more chaos. So, uh, or actually, it's a law of entropy, because this is proven in every physical system, that physical systems, unless there is some force applied upon them, they go to more and more chaotic situations. So the original situation is actually the reverse, that from chaos comes order, when the actual law of physics is that from order comes chaos. The theory of the Big Bang, if you really explore it and if you really get into it, it is nothing more than a creation mythology, and that all the same things that you would have to believe in order to believe in a Godhead, you have to believe for the Big Bang, that there can be infinite nothingness, or in other words, that there is infinite time, in the sense that once time is set into motion, then everything can be uh, compared to that beginning point. So even if you say there was nothing before that, but still that would mean that there is an infinite span of nothingness and then creation came into being. So in either way you have to believe in an infinite span of time. So whether you believe in Godhead or whether you believe in the Big Bang, once time comes into creation and there's a measuring stick from which everything can be uh, judged against, including an eternal time of nothingness, the concept of infinity is introduced. Whether you believe in the Big Bang, whether you believe in Godhead, there has to be infinity. Also, the original chunk from which the Big Bang exploded from would have to be infinitely dense and infinitely small. In other words, nothing. So again, the concept of infinity is introduced. So you can either believe that there is a personality or personalities that are, uh, that are existing for an infinite amount of time, or you have to believe that there was nothing existing for basically an infinite amount of time, then at a certain point, uh, there was an explosion of the nothingness into somethingness. The Big Bang is actually a creation myth that has all the same features as uh, whatever else that you would want to believe about uh, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, all the same uh, laws are in effect that you would have to believe and that it is no more rational or scientific than any other uh, creation theology. So in the same way, the theory of evolution, which is actually just the perversion of the Padma Purana's description of that the living entities, when they fall down from the spiritual world due to their desire to lord it over the material nature to become like small gods or to challenge the authority of God, that they start, the soul starts at the primary or the lowest forms of the creation. And then the soul, through evolution, transmigrates through different bodies until finally they get the human form of life where they can understand all the different uh, mysteries of creation and that they can use the human form of life as a jumping off point to return home back to Godhead. So because the uh, people of that time, of the time of Darwin, everybody was studying the Vedas, everybody knew all about the different aspects of the Vedas. Nowadays, you know, they've keeping all this sequestered and hidden from the ordinary person. And if you talk anything of the Vedic literature, people don't know what you're talking about, or any ancient wisdom system, because the ancient wisdom system has been more than ever sequestered and kept from the ordinary man to keep them in kind of a dumbed-down state of uh, bread and circuses. But back in the day, 
100 and 200 years ago, all the critical thinkers of the time, whether they be philosophers or scientists or naturalists, were all poring over and studying the Vedic literatures because it's the most complete description of the universal situation ever to come down to mankind. So Darwin took that knowledge and he perverted it that it's not the soul that transmigrates through the different bodies up to higher levels. He perverted that theory in order to make a name for himself that the bodies are what evolving and that even if we think of it in the theory of evolution there's so many there's so many flaws in the theory. Um, for example, even if we look on the cellular level there's so many little pumps and motors that there can absolutely be no precursor for and without those little pumps and motors and all the things going on on the cellular level that the cell could never co even come into existence that it's like with an automobile that the different parts are ha all have to play a role together or the vehicle will not function it's not that there was a wheel rolling down the road and then suddenly an axle became there and then a motor it's that all these all these different features of the individual cell have to come into being at the same time. And also, even if we want to believe the theory of evolution, that again, it's a theory that something came from nothing, that from nothing came life, in the sense that there were inorganic chemicals that had no life. Somehow they combined and then created life as they uh, became more and more complex. It's the same thing as the Big Bang Theory. It's just a creation mythology. All the same principles are there. If you want to say, well, in order to believe in Godhead, I have to believe in a person that is infinitely existing. It's the same thing with these other theories. The concept of infinity is introduced. And if you want to say, well, I, I don't want to believe in a theory of Godhead because how could he create so many different living entities from one person? It's the same thing with the theory of uh, evolution, that you have to believe that from nothing came something, or that from no life or chemicals came life and all the different types of life again going against the theory of entropy which would indicate that everything would go more towards one type of life that would be the most uh, suitable instead of all the millions and billions and trillions of different varieties that there are that why would why would that be the, the type of evolution that would be there why wouldn't everything go towards one form that would be the most evolved or the most perfectly suited in different situations. And also, after so many millions of years of mutations, etc., etc., let's say that there was something that evolved into another species, there would have to be two of them, both male and female, in order for that species to continue. So after so many millions and billions of years and mutations, and etc., etc., that you could just not have one thing evolving. There would have to be two things two species, two of that type of species that went underwent the same exact type of mutations, that they would able to be interbreed with each other, so they would have to be in the same location, and one would have to be male, and one would have to be female. So it's completely absurd. And then if we see how actually Darwin's theory was applied, if you read the actual books that beyond the theory of evolution, all this was basically to prove that uh, different types of people were less than so many people have used Darwinism and social Darwinism as because within Darwin's books he explains how the blacks are less than and this group of people is less than and women are less than and everyone is less than unless you're a white guy from Britain. So, you know, how can anyone accept such a theory as within the theory that 99.99999% of us would be considered less than an unviable form of evolution and that the people who are above us on the evolutionary scale have every right to wipe us out so as not to contaminate the genetic gene pool. Why would anyone believe a theory like that that is meant to destroy different populations of people and give the evil people of the world and the manipulators of human consciousness the justification to wipe you out? It's beyond, it's beyond unbelievable to me that people would actually go along with this.